Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 9, chapter 9, verse 17. Adam and Eve had more children and got grandchildren. Their children spread over the face of the earth and grew even more wicked. God looked out from heaven and saw how the human race chose to sin. Every person's thoughts were evil and their hearts were evil as well. The Lord's heart was deeply troubled and he felt regret. So the Lord decided that it was time to start all over. He would send a great flood to destroy all the creatures and mankind of the earth. But there was one man that found favor in the eyes of the Lord. His name was Noah. All the rest was darkness and evil and violence. And so God decided to save Noah. God spoke to Noah and said, I am going to put an end to all people for the for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I will bring flood waters on the earth. Everything will perish. No one will survive. But I will save you and your family. You build an ark and you will bring in with you to all kinds of living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. So listen carefully and do what I tell you to do. And so God gave Noah very detailed instructions on what to do, how to build the ark, from the type of materials to the measurements, to step-by-step -step directives on what to prepare, like food for his family and for each type of animal. And Noah did everything God commanded. When the ark was ready, God called all the animals it must, been, it must have been interesting to watch all the animals parading two by two towards the ark. And when they were all settled in, Noah and his family entered the ark. Then the Lord shut them in. All was ready. Then it started to rain. It rained and rained for 40 days and 40 nights. It drained and the water rose from the ground and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose above all the high mountains and everything on dry land was wiped out. People, animals, and the creatures that move along the ground, the birds, all of them died. Only Noah was left and those with him in the dark. Then, the rain stopped, and then the sun shone. The winds blew, and the waters started to recede very slowly. Noah opened the window and looked out. What do you think, boys? He asked his sons. Should we send out a raven to find out if the flood is over? It is not a bad idea, father, they replied. So Noah brought out the raven, and it flew back and forth, forth and back, waiting for the waters to dry up. It came back because there was no place for it to perch, and so they waited a few more days. Then Noah said, hmm, maybe we should send out the dove this time. You have nothing to lose, his sons answered. So the dove was sent out. Shortly after, it came back because it couldn't find a place to perch since there was still water over all the surface of the earth. Noah waited another seven days before sending the dove out again. This time, the dove came back with a freshly picked olive leaf in its beak. Wonderful! cried Noah. The land has dried up and the trees have started to grow back. He waited seven more days and sent out the dove again. And this time, the dove did not return. At last, 
the ark grounded on the slopes of Mount Ararat. God said to Noah, come out of the dark, all of you. So Noah threw down the gangplank and excitedly stepped ashore on the blessed earth. He and his family and all the different types of animals. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, Lord and gave a burnt offering to God. The Lord was pleased and he promised that he would never again use flood to destroy the earth. And they made a covenant with each other. God told Noah and his family to spread out over the earth and fill it with people. And as a sign of the covenant, he set a rainbow in the clouds as a reminder. Thank you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Tita Susan. Let's start with a word of prayer. Uh, Father, today we give you glory. That no one be glorified, Lord, apart from you and your son. Tonight, as we look at Noah's life, we are thankful. Thankful that you chose, you chose, Lord, a sinful man, just like we are, and work your purposes through him. Thank you, Lord, for the power and the grace that we will see in Noah's life, as with anyone's life. Any man that humbly bow their knees and faithfully walk with you. And that they will be declared righteous, Lord, and blameless because of that. Father, we thank you for this group that we have. For us to encourage each other. Whatever is happening in our lives, Lord, I pray that, there, that the, the people here in our midst will not be discouraged. Will not give up hope that will rejoice even in their sufferings, knowing that this, this pain that we are feeling is momentary. And it is working out for us for, and for your glory in the end. We are thankful, Lord, for the oceans of grace that is available from you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Amen. Amen. So last week, uh, we talked about the corruption of sin in man. No? Malungkot siya isipin, pero it, it drastically changed God's intended purpose for our relationship with Him. All because Adam and Eve chose to turn their backs on God. In this session naman, unfortunately, it gets even worse. No? Kasi it, we will be talking about the, the deepening and darkening of this world in this cancer called sin. Mula nung, nung, nung sin ni Adam, the world has grown increasingly more rebellious throughout the following generations with the, with the abuse of creation. So lumala nung lumala. And it got so bad that we see here in verse 11, sabi, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God, was corrupt. God saw how corrupt the earth had become and all the people on the earth had, had, had corrupted their ways. So corruption and violence. Actually, iniisip ko nga, hindi, hindi na tayo lumalayo doon ngayon, di ba? In fact, we may even be worse now. Kasi how do you describe this world that we are living in today? Corrupt and violent, di ba? You guys said so then last week nung naglista-lista tayo. And I also, but but I also don't want you to 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 lose perspective, because this is not just doom and gloom. Because despite all of this, the brightness of God's promise still shines through. So I want to remind you of this verse that I keep repeating many times last week of the first good news that God said that the offspring of of, of the woman, Jesus, will one day crush the head. Of the devil. At itong sinabi ni God sa Genesis 3.15, this, this promise, he meant it. No? And he is going to fulfill it. So itong, itong story natin tonight about the flood, it, this is no doubt one of the, the, the darkest period in the history 
of mankind. But even when we are going through a difficult part of the Bible, we must always come back and remember this promise. So really, the, the, the study of Genesis and the Old Testament is tracing this, this beam of light no? that starts from the Garden of Eden and right until it shines on the face of our Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. So itong ginagawa natin dito sa Bible series natin, we are looking at how God is faithfully working through to fulfill this promise of the Messiah. Yan, and I would like to ask you a question. No? Kung may ma-encounter kayo ng um, computer problems, no, what do you normally do? Ako kasi, hindi ako teki. Okay? So I would reboot the computer. And if it doesn't work pa rin, reboot ulit. And the worst that happens is when we do it a lot of times na and that the problem is still there. So we hate this problem because now it's going to be a long, painful process. No, Maybe um, uh, talk to uh, tech support or bring it to Green Hills no? and have it checked. And most of the time, we end up buying a new computer anyway. Now, I'm sure many of us have the same solution as I have, mag-reboot. Pero alam nyo ba, may reboot din sa Bible. Although that's not what God calls it. But that's what, you know, basically happened in the story with Noah and the ark. Things in the world had gotten so bad that God decided to reboot the creation. Yes, tama si Grace. God rebooted the world. Pero I want to be very, very clear here. No, God does not indulge in deliberate and unprovoked destruction. Okay, so he yes, he destroyed the earth, but it was no longer serving the purpose for which he created it. At anong purpose yun? Ay kita natin dito sa Romans 1:20 that humanity and all creation were de- were were intended to declare not only God's eternal power and, and divine nature but also His holiness, so that people are without an excuse. And as we have seen last week, so as much as we don't want to think about it, no, mahirap isipin, sin does not go unpunished. Sin has a lot of consequences, and one of those consequences is death. For the wages of sin is death, di ba? We heard that so many times. And we see God say this up front to Adam and Eve, nung sinabi niyang, you must not eat from the tree. Or for, for if you eat it, you will surely die. Okay, when human beings fall deeper and deeper and, and clearly frustrate this, this purpose that God has for us, the Creator has every moral right to start all over again. Okay, safety is found in those who simply just humbly seek the Lord. No? And, and the Lord makes this promise, this covenant with those who do, who do this. But but death, no, death awaits those who rejected. Yes, and that's true. Um, so I'm sure familiar tayong lahat sa story of Noah and the flood. No, it's a popular Bible story for children. And as a matter of fact, this is my niece's favorite Bible story because she loves animals, and the story has a lot of animals in it. At may listahan pa siya, ha? and um, so. The story, basically, in short summary, is about Noah, his family, and all the land animals, two by two, living in an ark for months as the flood waters rise. Pero we have to go beyond that. Noah's story is not your typical children's story. For the kids, it's a story about happy people floating in a boat you know, with animals in it. But sa totoo lang, the story actually warns us of God's judgment on the wickedness of mankind. Now, as we have seen in Adam and Eve and um, Cain and Abel's story, it's very clear uh, that sin must be judged because God is both loving and just. His nature upholds both, not one over the other. 
And God is the only one who fully and perfectly sees and understands the inclinations of people's heart. So, but with but with that judgment came grace. Okay, this story also highlights God's grace in a man who has found favor in the eyes of God. Noah, okay, Noah did not earn that favor. He was spared because God is gracious and rewards those who diligently seek him. So with grace also comes hope because God gave us a solution to the curse of sin and death. A solution that would come not from humankind, no, from, but from God. So let's go over this study by verses and see what happens no, and see what points, uh, what points we could learn along the way. So um, with these verses, can I ask Kilda to read, uh, uh, read it to us? Okay. Genesis 6, verse 5 to 7. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he made that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him with his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. For I am sorry that I have made them. Thank you, Hilda. So, Sabi dito sa verse 5, all the thoughts of man's heart was evil all the time. Okay? The wickedness of man was so bad okay, that God actually regretted that he made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. Now, the word regret here, if you look at the original meaning of it, it's not the same as yung Tagalog word natin na pinagsisihan. Okay? Um, because we see here in Numbers 23, verse 19, For God is not human, that he should lie. No? Not a human being, that he should change his mind. So if we look at the original Hebrew word used here is yinahem, okay, from the root word nakam. This word is used exclusively when we're talking about emotions. A feeling of pain, um, sadness, hurt, or unhappiness. So it has parallels with the word grieved. So this word does not imply that God feels that he had made a mistake or is having second thoughts or has changed his mind. Okay, it talks more about how grieved or how hurt he is by what is happening to the world because of sin. Okay, because sin is like a disease. It's a cancer that has consumed all humanity. So think about it. Okay? What would you do if someone you love was being ravaged by cancer? Diba you will take radical measures like chemotherapy to cleanse them from the cancer? Or let me explain it in another way. Okay? When my daughter was still about two years old, she had a very high fever. And we had no choice but to bring her to the ER. Kasi ayo talaga bumaba yung fever niya, and she wasn't eating. So the pedia told us na dapat ipadextros na siya. Okay? And as I watched her crying and squirming, and she was even screaming na, okay, trying to get away from the nurses who were about to do the procedure. At binalot nila yung daughter ko with a blanket. It's um, similar to a mummy so that she couldn't, she couldn't move. No? And she was crying out, Mommy, Mommy, ganon. And over and over, she was crying out. Um, I grieved over what she was going through. Okay? I was in tears as well. Ang sakit tingnan. Okay? But we know that they had to do it that way para sa yung pagtusok ng needle mas mabilis and it won't hurt her that much. Okay? And then when the dextrose was in place, it helped her. 
and after a few days she got well okay so for me okay as a parent it was the right decision did i regret letting them do it to spare me the pain of watching her go through the painful experience of course not no? there was no error in what they did and on what we decided to do but kung pwede lang she won't go through yung experience diba kasi ang sakit tingnan eh so kung pwede lang so yung feeling na yun is similar to what is being stated in verse 6 about what god is experiencing this was a low point in the history of humanity. The cancer of sin grieves God and hurts his image bearers. And we see that God was not merely angry over sin, but he was pained by it. You see, sin is never primarily about going against rules, but it is more about betraying a relationship. When we sin, we betray our loving God and hurt his heart. That's why he takes sin so personally. He was pained by the outcome of his creation. And if left alone, the evil of men will eventually overtake the entire race. And there will be no godly people left. There will be no line to produce the already promised Messiah, which is found in Genesis 3.15 that we discussed last week and what Paul mentioned a while ago. A God, uh, and God will not allow that to happen. No? And that's why he sent the flood to reboot the world, to cleanse the world of evil and injustice and destruction in mankind. Now, pinag-usapan natin kanina that God is always faithfully working to fulfill this promise of the Messiah, di ba? So how does God do that here in this story? First of all, we see that God selects a man, no? So he chooses someone. Now, ano yung criteria ni God for choosing this someone or for anyone for that matter? Sabi dito, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now the question is why? Why did Noah find favor in the eyes of the Lord? Why did God choose Noah? Ano sa tingin niyo? And we need to we need to ask this. We need to think about this because it's very natural for us to think, "Ha, huh, I know why God chose Noah because Noah was a good man. Noah was a kind man. Noah was the last remaining good and moral person in the world." He was chosen because he was, he was inherently better than the rest of this sinful world. At yan yung tinuro sa atin ever since forever. No? Kaya yan yung laging nasa isip natin when it comes to Noah. Pero naalala niyo yung pinag-usapan natin last week about sin? Romans 3 says, none is righteous, not one. In fact, in Isaiah 64, it says, all are righteous acts are like filthy rags for God. So no one is spared from the virus of sin, 100% infection rate. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned against God, every human being is born in sin. Everybody is infected. Everyone suffers from the guilt and shame. Therefore, everyone is cut off from God. Yeah, everyone then is in need of a savior. So Noah, like any other character in the Bible, is not an exception. So he is not chosen because he is a perfect guy. In fact, he's far from perfect. Because if you read through the very end of this story, makikita natin that he had this, this whole episode with drunkenness and with his son and a curse. So he's far from perfect. So what I want you to see here is that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord not because Noah is great, but because God is great. And as we go through Genesis and the rest of the Bible, makikita natin that just about everyone that God chooses and, and uses are flawed and sinful men. And yet God's grace uses them to fulfill his promise of sending us this, this Savior. So if you think the reason God chose Noah is because he has less sin than everybody else, think again. No? 
Yes, maybe on the surface, he is better than the murderers and the rapists of the world. But looking at what the Bible says about in its entirety, in the eyes of God, all have sinned. So there is no one who is better than another. We are all sinners who deserve nothing from a holy God. Okay, we are all equally condemned for all our sins. So Noah was not chosen because he was great, but because of grace. Now, what does grace mean? It's God's favor for undeserving people like us. Tama? And because of grace, Noah was sanctified by God. Now, ano naman ang ibig sabihin ng sanctified? It means to be set apart. Itinabe. So when God chose a man, he sanctifies him and changes him. He changes him so that he will live in a different way from the world where he was called from. And that's exactly what happened to Noah. So we see here that God sanctifies the man he chooses, Noah. And because of that, we see here in verse 9, he was declared righteous and blameless in his death generation. Noah walked with God. Now again, if you read this verse out of context, it's very easy for us, mga, we're, we're moralistic people. So, so we, we, when you see this, it's, we, we can say, ayan no, ang linaw, sabi dito, God selected Noah because he was righteous and blameless and he walked with God. No. There's a reason why this is verse 9, at yung kanina, Noah, Noah found favor in the eyes of God is in verse 8. No, because God chose Noah, because God imparted grace and sanctified Noah. Therefore, he was shown to be righteous and blameless. So again, God did not choose Noah because he was good. But God chose Noah because God is good. Okay, and we see that again here in Titus 3.5. It says he, that, that he saved us not because of the works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. So God's grace energized Noah and enabled Noah to live this righteous and blameless life, and he continued on walking with God. In other words, God changed Noah. Okay? And the last part of the verse, sabi, Noah walked with God. And this simply just means that he had faith. No? He honored God and obeyed God and had a relationship with God. And that's the idea of walking. Okay, walk with God. No? So, so now we see Noah is doing everything by faith. Imagine how much faith it would take to build this, this massive ark when everything was dry. We are so used to this, this part of the story na nung binubuo na yung ark, yung pinagtatawanan siya ng mga tao. Remember that? Alam niyo, yung, alam niyo sa totoo lang, if you read through the verses, wala namang sinabing ganun na nangyari. Wala. Gawa-gawa lang ng mga tao yung, yung narrative na yun. Pero pag inisip mo, oo nga, no? siguro yung mga tao nun, tatanungin siya, Huy Noah, anong ginagawa mo? <laughs> Noah will have to give up a lot of things to build this ark. A lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of resources. But he obeyed God by faith. Okay. So let's stop here for a moment no? and let's do an activity. So you may be wondering kung para saan yung pinapaprepare ko na ano, yung paper and pen. So first of all, I want to ask everyone to turn on your videos muna. Okay, please turn on your videos and then have your paper and pen ready so we can start the short activity. Yan. Yun. Nice to see the people's faces. <laughs> okay, you have your uh, paper and pen ready na? Okay, the rules. Okay, the rules of the game. I will be giving you instructions, okay? And so you have to listen carefully. Just like what Noah did, 
okay, in the story. Now, I will read the instructions once. Once lang, ha? So, you have to listen carefully. Tapos, sundan nyo lang ako. Sundan nyo lang yung, ano, yung instructions ko. And um, kung kailangan yung marinig ulit, no? if you want to hear it one more time, let me know. Okay? Um, pero hanggang two times lang tayo. Okay? So, are you ready na? Ready? Thumbs up? Okay, let's start. Okay, listen carefully, ah. First rule. Okay. Write your first name at the bottom left corner. Okay. Next. Write the numbers 1 through 9 on the first line of the paper. Leave a space between each number. Again? <laughs> Ulit, sige. One more time. Write the numbers 1 through 9 on the first line of the paper and leave a space between each number. Okay na? Next. Circle the number four. Next, fold your paper in half lengthwise. Then open your paper and fold it half crosswise. Okay, next. Open your paper and use the tip of your pen to poke a hole where the two folds meet. Taps up, okay? Moving on. Draw a star around the hole you made in the paper. Next, write the first letter of your last name in the top right corner of the paper. And please, again, say again. Write the last, I mean, write the first letter of your last name in the top right corner of the paper. Done? Next, on the last line of the paper, write the word finished near the right edge. Ulit. Ulit. Okay. On the last line of the paper, write the word finished near the right edge. And that's it. So, how was it? Easy lang ba? Were you able to follow the instructions exactly? Paul, wag mo na mag-share screen. I want to see everybody muna. Okay. 
Okay, so can I ask everybody to show your finished work? <laughs> Just raise it up. Parang my test, no? Okay, <laughs> mag-picture. Picture, o oh, sino maka-picture? <laughs> Ayan. Okay, so... Um, Paul will show to you, okay? Labas niya, mag-share screen na siya. Ito, this is what it's supposed to look like. Oh, my black, ano? Sorry. Okay lang, okay. Yeah, and that is what it's supposed to look like. So did you guys get it right? Yes. Yes, wow, galing, Tita Ellen. <laughs> How about the others? Here. Here. Yes. Galing. Sinong malayo? <laughs> ano yun? Kailang ng ID? Ah, kulang ng ID. Okay, finished. Ang hirap, no? Finished. <laughs> so were the were my instructions specific enough ba? Nakuha naman kagad no. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's good. Galing, galing. Galing nyo. Okay, so let's get back to our ano no. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks Madam. for ano doing that. Okay, Madam. let's get back to our passage muna no before we discuss what we just did sa activity natin. Okay, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make room in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening, one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. This is found in Genesis 6, 14 to 16. So here, God gives specific instructions to Noah, describing exactly how to build the ark. He had an exact plan for the precise use of the ark and cared that Noah executed the construction of the ark accordingly from measurements to materials and what should be built inside. Now, why does he have to do this? Okay, because the ark has one specific purpose. It is to save and preserve life. And God, in his infinite wisdom, knows precisely what was needed to, uh, what was needed to do exactly for this one. So when we no, listen carefully and follow the step-by-step -step instructions, and especially if this comes from God, we get things right, okay? Just like what we did a while ago. And just like what Noah did when God instructed him to build the ark and do other preparations. God's instructions may not sound logical at times. But when a person obeys it anyway, they are bound to see God's power at work. We have to remember that God is all-knowing infinite in his wisdom and is the only wise God and he knows the end from the beginning and when he reveals hidden things it is for our benefit okay our obedience does not benefit God but our obedience to God's instructions okay actually benefits us okay so now if you want to see how the ark might have looked like during Noah's time punta kayo dito no, ito yung nasa video natin nung kanina sa umpisa. It's actually a theme park in Kentucky sa US no? where they built an actual full-size replica of Noah's Ark. At maganda dito is that they built everything according to what was written in the Bible. So kung, kung may doubts kayo kung how this is all possible, makikita mo dito. Pero since hindi tayo pwede mag-travel ngayon, all, they, they have a YouTube channel that you can watch that they, they they explain everything to you no 
the scientific evidences, the hows and the whys, lahat ng tanong niyo will be answered. There's this, ano, there, there's this pervasing thinking in, in our generation today that Noah's Ark is, the story is just a myth. No? Kasi they, they're, ang, ang thinking kasi nila yung, yung picture kanina nung pang children's story, the, the, the small tub with the many animals, yan yung idea nila of Noah's Ark. Of course, that's impossible. But there are scientific evidences for all of everything. No? Kung ang tanong mo, paano kumasya lahat? It's answered here. Paano yung mga dinosaur? It's answered here. Using what was, they used what was written in the Bible and science and, and mathematics and added some common sense, they figured out everything. How many animals were there, how much space they take, how much food they eat. Kaya ito, isa sa mga bucket list ko. No, I just, I want to go here one day. And this just goes to show how God's plans are always exact and perfect. And it will always be perfect. Yes. And it's so nice. Ang ganda. Um, I wish I could go there and experience it myself. No, going, you know, be inside that enormous art. Hi. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Verses 17 to 18 says, For behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will, I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. Okay. I know uh, that a lot of people have a, have a problem with this. No? Mm -hmm. They have trouble with stories of God's condemnation and judgment tulad neto. Lalo na ito, kasi they, everybody was killed. Everybody died. And, and so some people look at this and look at, they, they look at this story and just look at it through one lens. Kasi nakikita lang nila yung violence and destruction that God proclaimed. And whether they can explain it in their rational, in their, di ba? Uh, whether they can explain it uh, in their mind well or not, they simply know that this story, this story bothers me. Why did God have to do this? Why couldn't he just forgive everybody and just let it go? First of all, gusto ko lang i-point out that it took Noah somewhere around 75 to 100 years to build the ark. No? Hindi naman agad-agad yan. So we can say that Ang unfair naman ni God because he did give these people sufficient time and warning and a chance to repent. Pero a lot of us still have trouble grasping this because we have this loop-sided view of God. We want God to be loving and kind and compassionate and concerned with our lives without any of this, this rat business. Di ba? And yes, praise God, He is loving and kind and near to us. But as Grace, Grace said kanina, He is both loving and just. So we can't just pick and choose what we want to believe. Because if we ignore the reality of who He is and who He revealed Himself to be, then we create a very unhealthy, one-sided and dangerous caricature of Him. Because if we only accept the the stories and the, the, the aspects of God that we like, we're turning our backs and blinding ourselves to the beauty of the fullness and fullness of who God truly is. In short, if the idea of condemnation still bothers you today, ito isipin nyo, if there is no condemnation, then there would be no need for a savior. Kasi how can you rescue someone if they are not drowning in the first place? Tama ba? And also, uh, this talks about how God showed Noah his plan to save Noah and his family alone. In doing this, uh, ginamit ni God yung word na magiging important no, for 
God's people forever. And this word is called covenant. A covenant is more than a simple contract or agreement. It is a pledge or an obligation or a promise. In this case, God wanted Noah to understand that the Lord was obligating himself to save Noah and his family from the coming destruction. Ang purpose ni God in using this language is trust. A covenant is a very solemn, uh, serious obligation, and its worth, um, its worth is only as good as the person making it. And it implies that the one making the covenant is taking his entire reputation on upholding his end of the bargain. And that's why a marriage is also considered, no, it's also considered as a covenant. So when God tells Noah he is making a covenant with him, it implies the most um, absolutely binding, um, serious kind of commitment. So moving on, no? can I ask um, Hermory to read the next verses for us, please? Paul, you next. Yeah. The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found your righteous in this generation. Seven days from now, I will send rain on earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the, on the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Then the Lord shut him in. Okay, thank you so much, Herm. Okay, Noah was about 500 years old when God told him the plans. And he was 600 years old when God told them to go in. So, wow. Diba? It took about 100 years to build the ark. So, that answered your question, Ina. Was it Ina? So, that, um, you know, it took 100 years. God was the one who told them also the time to go in. He told them to go in seven days before the first raindrop. And Noah obeyed. This means that Noah had God-given uh, God faith that produced dependence on God and courageous obedience. Then the Lord himself shut the door of the ark. Why? Okay. It is to keep Noah and his family safe. And so they waited patiently. So imagine you lang, no? Being patient and waiting listening to the continuous downpour for weeks and staying afloat for months and months. And then we know what happened next. The flood waters remained for another 150 days. And then it slowly receded. After Noah saw the tops of the mountains, he sent out birds to test the water level on the earth. So Noah used his intellect, experience, and the birds that God provided. And when the last dove did not return, Noah knew the water had dried up sufficiently to inhabit the earth again. Yet, you know, Noah waited faithfully until God told him to come out with his family and all the animals. Then God said to Noah, come out of the ark. You and your wife and your sons and their wives bring out every kind of living creature that is with you. The birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds came out of the ark, one kind after another. So, 
pinindot ni God yung reset button and we now enter into the new normal no there was a lockdown stay at home stay at stay on the boat notice for Noah and his family at ngayon God sabi ni God pwede na kayo lumabas so ngayon ngayon nakalabas na sila ano naman yung gagawin nila what's the purpose of God for Noah kasi Noah now is like the new Adam Diba? He's now the father of the new humanity. Eh, eh, kasi everyone was wiped out. No? So, what would God have him do? He said to Noah, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Now, if you look at these words, parang familiar, di ba? Saan ba natin nakita to? Alam nyo? Anyone? Have you heard of this? words before last week <laughs> it's familiar because these are exactly the same words that God said to Adam and Eve in Genesis 1:28 so nothing's changed no the purpose of God remains the same Adam go be fruitful and multiply tapos ngayon everything was destroyed so here comes Noah naman at sabi ni God, Noah, I'll give you the same mandate. Go, be fruitful, and multiply and fill the earth. Now, gusto kong mas ma-appreciate nyo pa yung context dito. Okay? In Genesis 1.28, when God said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, um, there's a reason for it. Bakit? Because there's a specific statement that God made about man before that. Naalala na yun? In Genesis 1.26, it says, God said, let, let us make man in our image after a likeness. So because man is made in God's image in particular, God said to Adam, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Bakit? So that the world may see me and know me. Okay? An image is a reflection of something. Diba? To show, to reveal something. So God said, I have made you in my image. So go, reflect, reveal, manifest throughout all the earth. And we are supposed to reign on earth in such a way that creation will know his glory. So, so when it comes to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 9, no? itong what we're reading tonight, makikita natin itong tong parehong command na to be fruitful multiply and fill the earth and we see it again that it ties up with being made in God's image in verse 6 uh, and this is very interesting kasi if, even though sin has entered the world at medyo medyo tinapaktapakan at nadumihan na yung image ni God in man it has not been totally erased no, there's still a, a remnant of the image of God in reality, in humanity. So therefore, the purpose given to man, even after sin has come in, even after the flood, even after all of that, it remains the same. Go, multiply, fill the earth, and reflect the image of God. And can I ask, Marielle, are you there? Yes, read? I'm here, Paul. Okay, sige. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creature as I have done. Thank you, Marielle. So what was Noah's response to God's faithfulness in preserving his family? He worshipped God by sacrificing a burnt offering. He humbly and gratefully acknowledged God's faithfulness to deliver him and his family from death. And Noah's worship rose to God as a pleasing aroma. Worship pleases God. Worship 
attests to God's worthiness and expresses your gratitude for the sufficiency of Christ's sacrifice. God seeks true worshipers who worship him in the spirit and in truth. True worshipers offer their humbled and surrendered um, souls before our God. True worshipers align their hearts and, and align their minds to the truth um, that God has declared in his word through the Holy Spirit. We can worship God in joy or sorrow, um, in wealth or poverty, um, or in need or in abundance. So um, let's consider how we can worship God in our current situation. Uh, how will you honor God's uh, worthiness and faithfulness in your life. So let's move on to chapter um, 9, verses 2 to 5. Okay, The fear and dread of you will fall on all the beasts of the earth and on all the birds in the sky, on every creature that moves along the ground, and on all the fish in the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And from each human being too, I will demand an accounting for the life of another human being. So the reboot button produced changes. The relationship between animals and people changed as evidence of sin's corruption. This time, the animals will be afraid of the people. And God now allowed animals to be eaten as food. But men are restricted from drinking blood and from killing fellow humans. Almost everyone recognizes murder as wrong. But on what basis? The Bible tells us it's because humanity is created in God's image. When a person kills another person, the murderer fails to honor the image of God in his or her victim. So here we are given an important insight of why murder is wrong. No, because humanity was created in God's image. And so now let's go through the last verses of this story. So um, I would like to ask Kurt to read them for us, please. Kurt, are you there? Yes. Okay, thank you, Kurt. I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you. A covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. Thank you, Kurt. So earlier, I discussed about the covenant being a uh, solemn promise of God to man. So now we see God made another promise, a second covenant to Noah and his sons. And in this um, second covenant, God promised he will never again destroy the earth and all life with a flood. Here, uh, he demonstrated his compassion for people with uh, this unconditional covenant, which does not depend on people's obedience for its fulfillment. Uh, God will fulfill the covenant because he is faithful to his word. Um, and this is a source of comfort and hope for all creation. 
The fact that he preserved a family to cultivate his creation, even when all humanity had rebelled against him, um, this one should prompt us, likewise, to show love and grace to others. And as we know, sin brings judgment and wrath, but there is a way out. Okay? God offers salvation graciously to all who will receive it, uh, but we have to receive it. Okay. Uh, the tragedy for so many, like the people in this story, is that when they die, uh, they will have missed the countless opportunities to respond to God's grace through faith in Jesus. God will not override you, okay? but until the day of your death, He will pursue you, trying to wake you up. So wag mong isipin na yung time na binigay ni God for you to repent. Uh, means that he is absent. No, he is not absent, okay? So please, don't be too settled into complacency. And then as we go through the verses 13 to 17, God shows a beautiful reminder of the covenant he made with all the living creatures on the earth. God designed the rainbow as a sign of the covenant. Covenants usually have a physical sign as a reminder of the promise. So it's like mga wedding rings. No? They represent the marriage um, covenants. This rainbow is a beautiful sign that affirms his power over creation. The brightness of the rainbow declares the steadfast goodness and the glory of God. Now, as dramatic as the flood was, God knew that its cleansing effect was only temporary. God's assessment of humanity after the flood sounds similar to his assessment before the flood, where he says, the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. So the reboot, so to speak, still had the virus in the system. To fully address the problem of sin, God will pursue a different solution, but this is a better one, and it will be a permanent one. So just as God was gracious you know, to Noah and extended salvation to his family, God also grants salvation by grace to whom? You know, it's to all who come by faith into the family of his righteous son, Jesus Christ. Okay. So, I want to end with this passage from my favorite chapter in the Bible, Hebrews 11. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is keeping with faith. So Noah, man of God. Most of us, when we see this statement, we focus on Noah, no? But that, actually, that's not the focus. The focus is on the last two words of God. Noah was merely an instrument. The real glorious one is not Noah, but God himself. And because of that, maybe today, you can change this statement and think of yourself. Blanc, man of God. No? Frederick, man of God. Hermre, man of God. Ellen, woman of God. Marielle, woman of God. Are you a man of God? Are you a woman of God? That what that God wants you to be. Na realize nyo ba that this could be you? Are you chosen by grace? And that, uh, that question could easily be answered by, are you changed by grace? 
and one day will you be preserved by grace. So I hope, I, so this is the way God works. When everything seems hopeless and dark, there is this, this bright light that comes from Genesis 3.15 that shines and cuts through that darkness into Genesis 6, into Noah's life. And we can continue to trace that light throughout history until it reaches our lives and into our hearts. So as we go through these stories, let us remember that it's not about Noah, it's not about Abraham, it's not about Isaac, it's not about Jacob or Joseph or Moses. It's about God and his ever-present invisible hand that is shaping and molding history so that you and I could have hope. And this new hope that we have, this new rescue plan of God isn't a boat or an ark anymore. It's trusting the finished work of this offspring, Jesus Christ on the cross. And I pray today, and I pray very hard that you will not try to prove your worth to God, hoping that he will choose you and accept you as you prove your value to him. But you will just humble yourself and bow at the knee of someone who is so great and amazing, whose love is absolutely out of this world. The Lord's plan for our lives and the lives of those who walk with him is exact and precise. At makikita lang natin yan if we surrender our doubts, our pride, our filthy rags solely and fully trust in him alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's a river flowing from the mountain It shows our God is true There's a sun rising from the valley It's our response to you Cause you are God God of all creation The earth grows And longs to be with you And where we are Our hearts are raised to heaven We breathe to worship you Grows, longs to be with you.
stillness I can hear you whisper Calling deep and deeper still The same voice that moved upon the water Says come drink and have your fill Oh, in the stillness, I can hear you whisper, calling deep and deeper still. The same voice that moved upon the waters says, come drink and have your fill. Oh, says, come drink.